Good morning and welcome, welcome to Matinair on Air. Jane Matinair, Greg Buck, Kevin Butenhoff coming to you live from our studio in beautiful downtown sunny Waukesha. You can always join us, 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842, or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. Stay close after our show ends at noon. We'll have the noon news followed by Todd Alba from noon to two and Maggie Dawn from 2 to 4 p.m. across the vast network. So stay tuned for that. We're going to do a little round of three headlines and a lie. This is where Greg Bach will present four headlines. Three of them are real. One of them is made up. I haven't done a very good job in doing this, writing them. Everybody guesses mine. So we reversed it, and now I will try and guess. Are you ready? I'm ready, but I would just like to reiterate for one thing. The reason why it was easy to pick up your lies is because your creativity. It was actually a compliment. You're a, ter- a, you're a terrible liar. I'm a terrible liar. If you ever work across a desk with Jane, she has no poker face no, whatsoever. None. Anything that just irritates her in the news, I know immediately. Yeah. So... I, yeah, I have. I can't control my face. Brava. <laughs> All right, Greg Bach, let's go. Three headlines and a lie. Tax edition. Exciting. All right, so I have four stories here. As you said, one of them is a lie, yes. three of them are the truth. Now, this will just go to show that this show is not rigged. We do not consult each other on what we're going to talk about. No. Nope. I just pick stories. And so this first one's going to show you that we do not consult because. I know you're already going to know. So, all right. On this tax day, the IRS is promoting the customer service improvements the agency rolled out since receiving tens of billions of dollars in new funding dollars through Democrats' Inflation Reduction Act. From cutting phone wait times to digitizing more documents and improving the quote unquote, where's my refund tool. To show more account details in plain language, agency leadership is trying to bring attention to what's been done to repair the agency's image as an outdated and maligned tax collector. I know that's true. Okay. Because we just talked about that last hour. Exactly. (laughs) Unless you were asleep and I'm talking to Jane. Yeah, I was here. Exactly. And very aware. I I, I was awake. Yes. Uh, So that was the first story. All right. The second story. it's It's a tasty story. Lovely. Krispy Kreme customers can look forward to getting a sweet treat at a sweet price on tax day, Monday, April the 15th. Krispy Kreme announced Friday that customers can purchase an original glazed or an assorted dozen in-store and get a second original glazed dozen for the price of sales tax in their state. Really? It's a little complicated language. It is a little complicated. So let me read that again. Customers can purchase an original glazed or assorted dozen, so 12 donuts. Right, you're buying a dozen. In store, and you'll get a second dozen for whatever your state sales tax says. So, like, you know, if you live in California, it's $1,000. It is not $1,000. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, So so in Wisconsin, it would be 5%. Ours is 5%. So whatever five percent of that dozen is, I think it is. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, that that makes sense. Pricing for the second dozen will vary depending on the state. The company stated that supply will be limited in participating Krispy Kreme locations. So it's not all Krispy Kremes. I guess so. It's kind of like when you go to a McDonald's and they say like, "Oh, participating, oh, participating McDonald's." Yeah. Okay. But have you ever gone to a fast food joint where they're like, "No, we're not doing. Monopoly. We're not doing that promotion." We're not, Okay. Or you go to a Toyothon, a Toyota thing like we don't recognize Toyothon at this at this at this dealership. Place. All right. Number three. All right. Three headlines and a line. I got Sherry working with me on the live stream here. That's not fair. I was meant to know about all partnerships before She's the competition. She's weighing in uh, with her opinions. And Sherry was my partner. She's an equal opportunity partner. Oh, I know how this is going to go now. This is okay. Whatever. A third headline, yeah. three headlines and a lie, okay. tax edition. A trip becomes deductible only if the purpose is primarily business-related. 
Conducting a minor business meeting while on vacation doesn't instantly transform what is really a vacation into a business trip, according to the IRS. All right. I'm always amused by what people try to deduct, so I asked a tax professional about the wackiest things she's seen. Allison, Flor Allison Flores, manager of the Tax Institute at H&R Block, highlighted some of the most creative and oddly legitimate attempts, so I only picked one of those. One woman asked whether the service she used to cleanse her home of bad spirits could be expensed <laughs> as a medical necessity. Quote, it may have made her feel better, but it's not a medical expense, unquote, Flores said. Nope, not tax deductible. I can see somebody trying that. I absolutely can. <laughs> trying to get a ghostbuster to come to the house? No, like I need a I need a pile of I need a a pound and a half of sage so I can burn <laughs> sage through my house and cleanse it of bad spirits. Especially somebody in California, you know, has done that. Absolutely. And I bet you they gotten away with it because in California, they lie. I don't know why I'm picking on California. I I don't know why. I like California. I've been there. Family lived there. I'm California. California. I'm sorry. Tom from L.A. I'm sorry. He, Greg apologizes. I apologize. To all of California. Three headlines and a lie. Continue. The fourth. And final headline for three headlines in a lie, tax edition. April 15th has not always been the filing deadline. March 1st was the original date specified by Congress in 1913 after the passage of the 16th Amendment. In 1918, Congress set the date to March 15th, where it remained until the tax overhaul of 1952, when the date was again moved to April 15th. But the date change has more to do with politics than policy. Because March 15th is also the birthday of 33rd President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and some of his advisors felt that any sort of focus on the president's birthday, i.e. news, parties, the middle and working class Americans would resent this as sort of a celebration in the face of the same regular Joe trying to pay the government their money. So they convinced IRS commissioner and frequent golf buddy to, pres to the president, and this is his name, T. Edward Andrews. <laughs> Of course it is. Hello, T. Edwards Andrews. I'm two Edwards and two Andrews. To make the, re the recommendation and the following year in 1953, the deadline for filing your taxes was changed to April 15th. Also, happily belated birthday to President Eisenhower. All right. So the first one is, you give, know, give, give me a recap. Okay. The first one is about improvements to the tax. We know that's true. Phone line, which we know is true. We know that's true. The second true. one is Krispy Kreme, and you can get a, a second dozen for, for the your price. sales tax. Correct. Third one is wackiest business deductions. And the fourth is the history of the tax filing deadline. See, that seems legitimate to me. I can, okay. see, I can see presidential advisors saying, we don't want that on his birthday. He is forever going to be associated right. with with you having to pay taxes and no one's going to like him anymore. So I th I think that's legitimate. Okay. So I'm I'm waffling now between the burning of the sage in your house yeah. as a deduction and the Krispy Kreme. Three headlines and a lie. Sherry Sherry says number 4. Sherry says no, Sherry number 4, you think what Greg made up the date of tax day? It's the April 15th. I didn't make it up. It's well, today. I mean, as far as it being when it, oh. th th that story said it well, was what is in your, March. What is your choice, Jane? I'm going to go with the burning of the sage as the lie. As the lie. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You should have listened to Sherry. Oh, no. Womp, womp, bo <laughs> now Sherry's got all of them. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> uh, yes. So the first three were all the truth. Uh, those were all true. The fourth one, I laid all sorts of clues within there that you'd only know if you were as big a nerd as me. First of all, uh, the tax overhaul was done in 1954, not 1952. Did you really know that off the top of your head? I did. And I only know that because I remember it from a class and I remember talking about Eisenhower. Don't ask. I, I didn't I didn't go on a lot of dates in high school and or college and or until recently. Um, also... Dwight D. Eisenhower was, in fact, the 34th president of the United States of America, and his birthday is not March the 15th. It is October the 14th, 1890. So, well, well done, Greg Bach. Thank you very much. Well done. You are a, a good liar. I'm an amazing liar. <laughs> I have decades of experience. Um, 
My gosh, I'm looking at, wow, Sherry, you're just blowing up the chat line here. I love it. Sherry hit them all. I mean, she, she had access to, what? why didn't you listen to Sherry? Because I'm wrong. And you know, you want to, I think, I don't know. I mean, what, are you 0 for 3 with me now? I think so, yes. <laughs> I think so. We're I'm gonna, not, We're going to make Calvin do it next I'm time. I'm not much better, honestly, though. Like, I'm like, I think I'm 1 for 2. So... I can't go. Not a great stellar, no. stellar, not stellar records. For, no, no, in any any stretch of the imagination. But that was a lot of fun. That was three <laughs> headlines and a lie. Tax edition. Tax edition. And I should have stuck with my instinct. I knew someone would try and and write off burning sage yeah. in their house to cleanse bad spirits. I can absolutely see that happening. But you are absolutely right. What I made up in that story. The reason why I made it up is because. There's so many stories in political history of people saying, oh, we need to change this or do this because this would make it look bad and blah, blah, You know, like, so I, I used a very, very sensible option. It just happened to be a falsity. So close to true. Just so, ooh, yeah. so close. Part of true. a movie. I can make that. That's a script right there. That's a movie <laughs> script. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, all right. I'm going to try. All right. We have a short break coming up. And again, just a reminder to download the Civic Media app wherever you get your apps. It's absolutely free. And that gives you the opportunity to listen across the entire network. If you want to listen to WISS, you can do that in Oshkosh or WGBW in Green Bay. Or if you're listening on WLAK in Amory. In Amory. Amory, Amory, Amory. You can listen all across the network via the Civic Media app. I think you faded me out for that, too. <laughs> that was teamwork. Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. We're coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome to Matt Nair on Air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Join us. Call or text at 855 75 Civic, 855 752 4842, or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. It is tax day. DNR is also asking folks, please don't do any outdoor burning. They had We had like 300 wildfires. Uh, or 67 wildfires covering 300 acres on Saturday. Oh so there's still lots of real dry spots. We do have rain coming in. That's going to be coming in later tomorrow afternoon, I think, and then into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. I have a feeling this is, I mean, summer's not going to be any easier either. And if what happened last year with up the, in with Canada, Canada is going to be a regular thing. I sure hope Which not. I've heard people say now this is, we should at least be used to it where we'll know the smoke coming down. We're like, oh, that's from Canada. Um, yeah, just you use, use some caution, folks. We, yeah, please know. just be careful for the next couple of days. Don't yeah. don't burn things outside and don't throw cigarette butts out your car windows. Yes, that would be a good place to start. Swallow them. No, don't swallow them. Sorry. I just want to make Calvin laugh. All right, go on. <laughs> um, this is very concerning, yeah. and we've talked about this before, and I just think it's worth repeating. The continual threats against our election workers and our elections officials, and it's coming right home here to Wisconsin. Uh, former President Trump's decision to continually attack Wisconsin Elections Commission Administrator Megan Wolf, and he he continually does this, and he's yeah. been doing this when he's out on the campaign trail and when he refers to Wisconsin. He was apparently on some radio show in Green Bay and said the same thing. She's going to, oh yes, the former president publicly and falsely accusing, according to the Milwaukee Journal, sent a wolf of rigging this year's election four years after Trump 
sought to meddle with another battleground state's elections by pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State to overturn Trump's loss to President Biden, terrorized two Georgia poll workers. Remember those two ladies? Yes. Terrorized them. Trump named them. They got doxxed. They got harassed. They had to move. How is there no recourse on that? And that to me, that's not a freedom. Of, when you are causing the, the, the danger of people. Endangering people. Yeah. When you're causing that, how is, how are you not involved? Like you go after the people who are going after you. They're like, cause like, I just don't, I don't know how it can't be traced back to him. Trump said in an interview Tuesday, Megan Wolf will try and steal another election. Robin Voss should terminate Megan Wolf and they should put somebody in who's going to be fair, not for the Republicans, just fair. And if they do that, they're going to win the election by a lot in Wisconsin. (laughs) I've given out big ship contracts, a lot of big contracts that nobody else would have given to Wisconsin. I gave and it never made sense to me. Now we find out why. No, she should be gone. Just a reminder, my friends, court case after court case, investigation after investigation, mm-hmm. recounts that were done. Yep. The Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty said that the election was not stolen. And who else said it? Robin Voss. Exactly. After but that's why they're but that's why Trump's after him now. Yeah. It's oh yeah. You're all rhinos, you're all traitors. Also, Am I right in that he's talking about the election, then all of a sudden he just veered into talking about ships? Yeah. Where, I don't know where that came from. I mean, my gosh, between that well, and the whole Robert E. Lee speech, this man is... And that's my problem, too, is like, like Joe Biden's not well. I don't know about your dude, my dude. Well, and I wonder how many people who are maybe undecided still yeah. about who they're going to vote for in November in the presidential race, if they watch these rallies... Yeah, I doubt it. I really you, sh- you really should. You should at least read you, about you them. You should re- certainly read about them. And I think, I mean, maybe you don't want to watch the whole two hours, but he said some things in Pennsylvania on Saturday that were just Looney Tunes. Yeah, he meant it. I, I asked you a question before we went on air. Did he possibly offend the heirs of Confederate soldiers or not the heirs, but the, the, the ancestors and relatives? Because he called... He said Robert E. Lee would have won if it wasn't for his stupid soldiers. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, and just the whole thing about talking about Gettysburg and how it was horrible and vicious and yet beautiful in so many ways. He saw Remember the Titans and went from there. And then talking about Robert E. Lee, have you noticed he's not in favor much anymore? What? (sighs) What? He's not in favor anymore because he was leading a war against the United States. You know, people grow up. Some people love the Beatles when they're a teenager. And then they're like, I'm not that much into them. And Robert E. Lee, I was more in my 20s. Back to what we started with. And this being about Elections Commission, Wisconsin Elections yeah. Commission, uh, Commissioner uh, Ed, uh, Megan Wolf. They've had to upper security now. Because of these mentions that that Donald Trump is when he focuses on her and points her out in tweets or radio interviews or whatever. Yeah. Now we had to increase her security measures because of continued threats. Are they are they increasing the security measure of all of them or is it just her? I mean, if this thing is like, what, five years ago, this never would have been a thing. You wouldn't have security for these individuals. Now we have to pay money. And they should, we should protect them. I want Megan Wolf to be safe. All of them. But now because of once I, once again, I've said this just now, because of what he has said, these new measures have to be taken and he is not held one bit accountable. He won't be. He never is. And also mentioned in this article and she was a recent guest of ours, uh, Kathy Bernier. Yeah. Who is with uh, Keep Our Republic Mm -hmm. and they hold meetings and and in, in informational sessions about how our elections work to get away from this false narrative yeah. that the election was stolen and the next one is going to be stolen. 
we got to get away from planting these seeds of doubt so that we're going to we're going to be back right there where we were. And I'm going to reference something we talked about last week with it's things like what Eric Hubdy says on record. Van Wangard says on record where you say things like 2020 is over. But 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 there were problems. There were problems. But and that you know when you talk about those undecided and independent voters, more undecided, that's the problem is that when you see a politician or someone running for office, you might be like, oh, maybe there were some problems. I don't I don't know. Well, but my whole argument going back to that is there were a whole bunch of Republicans that were elected on that same ballot. Yes, of course. And those were apparently OK. Yeah. Those ballots were good ones. Yeah. But Trump lost. So, the, I mean, everything only that was illegitimate then. Yeah. That makes no sense. <laughs> No sense. We're walking into the crazy zone. All right. All right. We have news on the way next. Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you on the Civic Media Radio Network. Matt Nair on air, Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Dr. Slide on the board, coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can call, you can text at 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon continues to ruin. Uh, Before we went to the news, we were talking about a story in the journal Sentinel, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, Donald Trump continues to... Name call Megan Wolf, the Wisconsin Elections Commission administrator, blaming her for the outcome that he lost in Wisconsin in 2020, even though the election outcome was confirmed by judges, state audits, Trump financed recounts, a Republican led review and a study from conservative law firm, Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty. But again, he was on a radio station in Green Bay last week, fingering Megan Wolf, pointing to her as the problem and she gets death threats now. And so we have had to uh, increase her security. Every time they repeat these lies about Megan Wolf, her security is jeopardized. According to Ann Jacobs, a democratic member of the Wisconsin elections commission who was chair during the 2020 election election work never used to be something involving risk of safety. And yet here we are. Yeah. And not to mention, excuse me, the two Georgia poll workers he mentioned by name. I mean, he mentions anyone by name, and that's it for them. You're a target. You, you are a target. target on your back. And if if he speaks to you kindly, just wait. You will disappoint him. You will let him down. Perfect example, Mike Pence. Yeah. I mean, that's just. I mean, this is an example. And and I go back to what I said before. There's got to be a day, some day, where he's held accountable for these things. I mean. Megan Wolf is a great election official. She is nationally lauded for her work. She is respected and capable. And as you said, time after time after time after time, all the reports coming in saying nothing was done wrong. There certainly wasn't significant amounts of enough fraud to over to change the results of the election. There just weren't. It's weird. Any sort of fraud we seem to find generally falls on the side of the former president. It does. Yeah. It does. But but yeah, let's keep let's keep talking about Megan Wolf because we have nothing else cuz there's no policy. There'll never be policy that comes out of his mouth unless it has to do with the wall. He doesn't care about anything else. Not not particularly. Uh Don Millis, the Republican chairman of the Wisconsin Elections Commission, 
said Donald Trump should be focusing on vote on issues voters care about. There are lots of things the president could be should be running on. He should be talking about the economy. He should be talking about Israel. He should be talking about issues that people care about, Millis says. And I think one of the issues that people who he's got to convince or the issue that those people don't care about is Megan Wolf. Yes, you're right. Well, I think if you're trying to give Trump advice on what he should be talking about, you have no clue who this man is. You'll never advise him on what he he'll he'll get to Israel. We just don't know when. Right. He'll get to the economy, but we don't know how he does it. And he'll it'll be the beginning, middle, and the end of the speech. Like you're trying to talk to him like he is candidate Trump. He's not. He is a hurricane of words, just destroying everything in his wake. So tr- I'm tired of people trying to treat him like someone who can be advised. I, I agree with you. Uh, Millis continued, Don Millis, again, the Republican chair of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. 2020 was a challenging year in a lot of respects because of COVID. And you had Wisconsin and other states trying to do the best they could to deal with the situation. If there was a crime, crime scene, I haven't seen any evidence. There's another That's one. That's because there isn't any evidence. Put that one on the pile of all the information. There was no I mean, shenanigans, maybe. I have no idea. But what I do know is, as you said, not enough shenanigans to keep talking about it after four years. Dan Canodal blaming Governor Evers for not doing more to address trust in elections by vetoing some Republican authored bills, including one that would have required the state DOT to note on new ID cards issued to non U.S. citizens that the card is not valid to use for voting purposes. U.S. citizens, people who are here illegally cannot vote. And they also, I don't believe they can obtain state IDs either. They can't get driver's license. If they get an ID, it says on there, like it, you're right. Not a citizen. Again, this, a solution, uh, 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 there, there is no, this is not a problem. Yeah. You are trying to find a solution for a problem that does not exist. I would imagine that anyone who is in this country illegally, the last thing they want to do is try and vote mm-hmm. and then get caught and get deported. It doesn't make yeah. sense. Anybody who's anyone who is here undocumented is an undocumented individual here in this country who would vote illegally. Most likely is going to be told by someone. Yeah, you can do it. It's a municipal election. So you, of course you can, you live here. That's fine to try to cause some problems. But Mr. Canodal can, his party is the one who did exactly what you said. There was no problem before. We didn't need ID voting. There was not enough problems to warrant that law, but here we are. Because it's a very popular, it's a very popular misconception, right? Yep. That our elections aren't secure. And if that's going to open the door for them to question the results of the next election, then that's entirely what this is for. It's the perfect. Is to keep the groundwork in place so that if and when Donald Trump loses in November, it was all rigged. It was all a cheat. Yeah. The only, the only outcome they will accept is if they win. Yeah. That's not how it works. And we'll never hear the end of it. It's, it's weird. I want him to lose. I want him to lose like handily, like a Janet Protasiewicz victory for Biden. Like, it's not even a question. Like why were we even worried in the first place? But I want him to lose. Unfortunately, that loss will then come with five to 10 to 15 to 20 years of just people over your shoulder saying, but you never, but he didn't, he didn't lose clean. Again, Kathy Bernier, who's been on our show, she's mm-hmm. with a, a group called Keep Our Republic, former Republican lawmaker and election clerk, said she disagreed with some measures that were allowed during the 2020 election, but has spent four years trying to persuade members of her own party to view the election landscape accurately. Bernier pointed to allowing non-election workers to help administrator elections in Green Bay as a problem, as well as a pandemic-driven decision by the WEC to advise clerks to ignore that law about poll workers and special voting deputies at nursing homes. 
Mistakes were made, says Kathy Bernier, but it didn't cost Donald Trump the election because that has been proven over and over again. If he can't win in 2024 under the current circumstances, under the current practices and procedures, it's about him and no one other than him. I would love to know all the quote unquote mistakes that were made, because if there were mistakes that were fixed, don't call them mistakes anymore. Like my, my big problem with saying mistakes were made and I is a, it is an election 100% smooth sailing from start to finish. No, they're going to be, you know, running the ballots, running the pencils. I don't know. But when we say things like mistakes were made, that's, that is like, that is leaves, but it leaves the door open. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that is, it, it leaves that, the door open. That's the rubbing the sticks together, the fuel, the fire to make them say, see, mistakes were made. We'll never know which ones. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't help either. No. Um, and then switching gears as we talk about where we were four years ago, walk down memory lane in the middle of, or at the beginning of the global pandemic. Yeah. And this came across my Twitter feed. Um, it was on this date four years ago that the first stimulus checks were going out. Yeah. And Donald Trump insisted that his signature be on them. Do you remember that? Were they tall enough? Cause he's got a tall signature. I, I, I remember that very clearly. I don't remember. I was, I was on the phone. I, I was on the phone with unemployment. Sorry. I don't remember much of those first few days. I just remember my husband saying when I opened up the check and he looked at it and he said, are you going to, are you, are you going to cash this? And I said, well, yeah, I am. Even though he felt his, oh, he wanted credit for it. He wanted credit for sending out that money. I think that's why. Oh, no, I do remember that. That's right. We did get them in the form of a check. I thought it was, a, oh, my god. Yeah, we got checks. We got checks in the mail. Oh, wow. Yeah. See how quickly we forget? Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> and, and then just for a little bit of levity. Yes. This came across my feed this morning. Okay. As we're talking about four years ago and COVID and all of those things. Donald Trump's former right-hand man, Cash Patel is now selling pills that will allegedly detox you from the COVID-19 vaccine and protect you from other people who may shed it on you. Shed. <laughs> Warrior Essentials. It's called Warrior Essentials. You were immune to the propaganda, but are you, are you immune to the shedders? Gross. <laughs> Was Patriot pills taken? <laughs> Got to make a living, I guess, once you leave the administration. So, uh, warrior essentials, Greg Bach. So, if you don't, you've probably heard the name Cash Patel. It's the greatest rap name on earth. It is a good name. But if you don't know what he looks like, I want you to Google Cash Patel, K A S H. P-A-T-E-L. And remember, when you see the picture that comes up on his Wikipedia page, this man, he served as a U.S. National Security Council official, a senior advisor, an acting director of national intelligence, and the chief of staff to the acting United States Secretary of Defense during the Trump presidency. Look at the picture that's on the Wikipedia page, and that man was one of the integral parts of our national security and defense plan. He looks like he's staring through your brain. All the best people, Greg Bach. <laughs> the best people ever. All, I swear, he surrounds himself with all the best people, except like half of them who left and turned over and quit or got fired. So the next time around, yeah. it will really be all the best, best, best people. The, those are the people that actually, like that was a weird thing is back in the day, they said things like Rex Tillerson. Well, he's a CEO. He'll be able to stand up to Trump and talk business. That's not what's going to happen this time. Well, and no, it's not. And and it it's going to be worth going and looking back at that because Trump had the highest turnover in his administration, I think, in mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he he, how, he had a lot of acting. Oh yes, positions. Well, that was the thing is they they said that was an absolute strategy because as an acting, you don't have to right. You don't have to get confirmed. Exactly. Exactly. Which which should worry people. That, sh that should worry folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, Donald Trump still saying, I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate. Uh, little side note here for you. Uh, Virginia requires the MMR vaccine, chickenpox, polio, 
Across the country, public schools districts require kids be fully immunized against polio, measles, hepatitis B, chickenpox, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis before they can attend classes. Well, if they have to have a, a vaccine, they have to have an ample supply of warrior essential patriot pills in case those kids change their mind. Because shedders are everywhere. By the way, it's really hard to say while staying FCC compliant. And you did it. But Thank you, did you it. very much. <laughs> shedders are everywhere. Be careful for those shedders out there and uh, <laughs> go get your warrior essentials. Or, I don't know, drink a glass of water. It'll probably have the same effect. Go touch grass. Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. And here a few to speak of. morning. Welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Calvin Butenoff coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Join the show. Call text 855-75-CIVIC 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Sherry, thank you for the nice comment. Thank you so very much. Sherry just says, I love your show. We love you, Sherry. We love that. Uh, and uh, Andrew says... Andrew says, no, turn off that song right now. It's way too early in the day for Matt Nair on air to Aww. be wrapping up. Well, thanks, you guys. That's very nice That's of you. very, very and nice And I want to send you. a shout out to Carmela for such wonderful uh, support. She said, Greg, it's okay to be a liar once in a while. Where there are par- problems with lying when it's pathological, like in Trump, he's a narcissist. True narcissists don't lie only to avoid accountability. They lie for the high. They lie for the power. You're right. I don't get high because only losers get high. Sorry. I don't know where I was going. With that. I going don't back to just say no days <laughs> or something. I was a dare kid. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the Carmela. I appreciate that. I do love having fun with three headlines and a lot. And you so. do a very, very fine job. Thank you. Uh, we're going to wrap things up just with a little trip for me down memory lane. Uh, our high, uh, my childhood home is for sale Yeah, in Hartford and I've talked about this before. Our father was a mortician mm-hmm. and we lived upstairs. And so, you know, downstairs was where we held the funerals, the the showings. And then on the, in the basements was where the casket room was. And there was an embalming room and all that stuff. And so uh, it has been sold before mm-hmm. and had several different incarnations. I believe when they first sold it, it remained a funeral home. And then ultimately it, they, the new owners turned it into a veterinary office and then ultimately, it is now a duplex. It was so surreal, you guys. I haven't <laughs> been. I haven't been in that house oh, for forty-five years. And you went inside. We went. Yeah, I went. My sister and I went. Yeah, because it was an, my. Yeah, my sister and I went. It uh, had. They had an open house. It was just fascinating. Yeah. It was just fascinating, and how small everything looked. Yeah. You know, all the built-ins are still in there. We had this built-in bookcase in what we called the family room. And mm-hmm. 
my sisters and I all talked about having to dust that thing and how much we hated dusting and we still hate dusting to this day because of that, because of that thing. And in my mind, it was ginormous. Yeah. And those chores were like backbreaking. So ex- yes. Excruciating. And now I looked at it like, pff, it's nothing. Yeah. You, you remember when you're like, I don't know if you had one, but you remember, like, I remember when I was a kid, my mom would be like, can you, uh, empty the dishwasher? Uh, that is a minute and a half at best. And I treated it like I was like doing manual labor in the hot fields. Like, oh, yeah. It's the suffering. Yeah. The take suffering. out the trash. Oh, God. What else do you want me to do? But it was really interesting to see that the changes that they had made and the real estate agent, uh, she said, oh, you know, you, we were the, my sister and I were the first ones there. And she said, you're the first ones today. And I said, is there a lot of interest? Oh, well, you know, we'll see. It's the first open house. And yeah. I said, we grew up here. Oh, you're the funeral people. Whoa. And we were. We were the funeral people. And she immediately knew she lost a sale. Well, I just, no, I think it was, I don't know that anyone's ever been able to clarify exactly what everything was used for when when we were growing up there. So was the basement finished now? What does it look like down there now? Um, now it is, we, now it's a, a lot of canning stuff. Okay. The people who live there must do a lot of canning. Gotcha. So there's lots of storage. Apparently the room where the caskets used to be on display, they now hope they play pickleball down there. Oh, that's so cool. Because it's huge. It's a huge room. It's a big house. Huge basement. Huge basement. Yeah. But just a big house overall. How did you turn, like, what? It- and there's an elevator in it too. Oh, man. Because we had to have an elevator to move the caskets from one floor to the other. So it's a big elevator. That's a cool house. Actually, that elevator, though, it's so slow, I could start it and run up the stairs and beat it. (laughs) (laughs) And it's only one flight of stairs. So I've been to to funeral homes before, and I think I've been to funeral homes that uh, that double as a home Mm -hmm. upstairs. It was very common. So on the first level is basically the, the business side. Right. So how do you build that? I mean, like the top side, like the top part, the second floor, of course, there's the house. Right. Kitchen, bedrooms, bathrooms, blah, blah, blah. Do your thing. How did you turn, not you, but how did they turn the first floor into a livable home? Because usually funeral homes are sprawling. Yeah. Separate big rooms. Yep. It, that must have been a lot of work oh, to turn that into a house. Absolutely. Because as you said, there were some real big, we had two big chapel chapels. Yeah. And so you have to build a lot of walls. Yes. And they installed this huge, beautiful kitchen. Yeah. And the upstairs, again, where where we grew up, has remained pretty much the same. And it just all looks so tiny. Yeah. It just all looks so teeny. I don't know how eight of us ever ate in that kitchen. <laughs> you made it. That's just how it was back then. Right? In the day. You just made it work. Yeah. There was a, a time where my mom asked me to go to the elementary school, St. Mary's, right here in Waukesha. She's like, I have this big box of pencils I want to donate to the school. They just could use them. I'm like, all right, cool. So I went there and I dropped them off and I said, do y'all mind if I just look around for a moment? I went here and they're like, of course it's, you know, kind of stay in sight. Don't you know, right, go wandering. Right, yeah. Like I was a foot taller than the lockers. I would have a permanent <laughs> back injury if I tried to reach down to the bubblers. Like it looked normal too big to me as a kid, but I was a giant Kid. in that hallway oh yeah I, i'm sure as a, an adult yeah it was so weird so when you said it was so small i'm like so tiny yes absolutely uh robert from mcfarland asked did you all did did you all ever watch six feet under i did oh absolutely and people have asked me that many 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 times and here's what i will say about six feet under those people had more sex in one episode <laughs> than i've had over the course of my entire life Getting to know Jay <laughs> that Nair. That's, they Getting were, to know they were that a Nair frisky, on the air. They were a frisky group on, on Six Feet Under. <laughs> you think? That for sure. My goodness. Oh. One of the greatest series finales ever. Oh, I was, fantastic. I was a pile of, of tears. tears. Yeah, oh it was God. it was so good. All right. Thank you so very, very much, Greg and Calvin and our engineers. <laughs> Without you guys, nothing works. Thank you all for listening and for calling and for texting. Genuinely, it means everything. This wasn't a Monday. This was a fun day. It was. Oh, look at that. (laughs) I hope you find some joy today and you have the chance to share it. Stay with us. News is next on the Civic Media Radio Network.